How's it going everybody? Never stop the RC. Well, you would think this is a big RC truck, the Axial SCX6, but when I was driving it around at Rock City, there were some kids climbing around on the rocks and they were like, hey, look at that cool little truck. Little? No. Sometimes it's good to be taken down a notch and leave it up to kids to point out that clearly this is a little truck. Sometimes you're just a grown up driving around a little toy truck. Maybe I never grew up, but I don't really care because it's all about fun and I was having a blast driving this thing around. The question, is this big 1.6 scale Axial SCX6 worth the high price, almost 1100 bucks, and you still need the battery and the charger? I've been driving this thing a lot over the past week since I had the week off, and I'm gonna run a bunch of crawl video as we go along, uh, different spots that I took it to, and I'll try to answer that question for you. Just so you guys know, this is an unpaid, unsponsored video. I went to Delta RC, my local shop, melted the chip on my credit card checking out, Paid videos are to me basically ads. That doesn't mean they aren't worth watching. Uh, you can get some good information from them. You can see the product, but it's good to know that they are essentially a paid promotion or an ad and YouTube now requires those videos to be labeled as such. That's good because no one's ever gonna tell you that it's a paid deal. With that, if you guys wanna see more reviews like this, please consider subscribing, liking the vid or leaving a comment. Those things are always much appreciated. And in this video, there's no posing of the truck. I didn't put it up on any high rocks to take some pictures. Everywhere that you see it, it had to get to on its own. So are you going to ask your wife to get you one for the holidays? Are you that brave? Do you feel lucky? Don't tell her it's about 3% the price of an average new car in the U.S. That's kind of a bad way to approach it. You can ask your parents for one. Tell them it's three times the cost of a 10 scale crawler, but it's five times better. And you know it's probably going to go up in value. Well, it won't. You can also mention that even though the truck is expensive, all you need is a three cell 5,000 milliamp pack to get going. And the AA batteries, for the transmitter are included. I will just quickly show the unboxing and run over the specs so we can show more driving video. I imagine if you're looking at the truck, you probably know the details already. The only thing you have to decide is what color you want, which is anything, as long as you pick silver or green. I was leaning towards silver and asked the guy at the shop for his opinion. He likes silver because it shows up better against a green background. There's more contrast there. That was enough for me, but the green truck also looks excellent. The motor is a firmer 1200 kV censored crawler motor. That alone is probably about a quarter of the cost. ESC is a firmer 120 amp censored smart ESC. Another quarter of the cost right there. S905 Metal Gear Servo for steering. SR515 5 channel receiver. S614 Metal Gear Servo for the gearbox. Comes with a DX3 radio with thumb steer. You have a three link front and a four link rear suspension. Oil filled coilover shocks. Two gear Metal Gear transmission. The tires are seven inch BF Goodrich KM3 tires. And I love these tires. They're big and soft and they have plenty of grip. Nice and squishy for that air down off-road feel. Not so great for the highway. Checking the Horizon website, there is plenty of spare parts support. It looks like everything's in stock. I will try to answer the question of whether this big expensive truck is worth it the best I can. But whatever side of the fence you're on, whether you think it's just way too expensive, whether you think it's really cool, whether you're on the fence, I think it's pretty great that Axial actually put this out. It's not every day you see a new RC product like this. The battery compartment is huge. There are three battery trays and the recommended three cell 5,000 milliamp pack looks tiny when it's placed in there. That pack may be small, but it's gonna give you around 25 to 30 minutes of runtime, give or take, and depending on how you drive it. You could put two 5,000 milliamp packs in parallel for a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity. That's probably gonna give you at least an hour of runtime. And that's good because the one thing I don't enjoy is putting the body on. You've got these body posts on the underside. That's great for keeping the scale lines of the body. Uh, you don't have any body posts sticking up out of the hood, nothing sticking up out of the roof, but it's a pain to get the body lined up and seated. You do have these pull tabs on the body clips, which are nice, and there are grooves on the side of the chassis to line the body up. That makes the whole process just a little bit more difficult, a little bit more awkward. I definitely would say, you know, you want to use a table when you're putting it on uh, or put it on in the back of your car or whatever, trying to do all that in the ground is a little more awkward. The good thing is the body is snug. Once it's on there, even rolling the truck over, crashing it, uh, the body never came loose, never came off. You've got LED head and tail lights. Uh, I feel at the price, maybe a light bar option would have been nice, maybe even a winch, uh, but I'm happy with the level of detail. For this price, you should get a lot. Uh, there's plenty of more detail you could add to it for the modelers that are out there. And there's some nice interior details, including a driver, seat, steering wheel, that sort of stuff. Every time I look at that driver, I think it's Jeff Bezos. I just can't stop seeing him sitting in there driving to go off on his rocket, I guess. You can't see the interior too well because the windows are tinted and they're pretty dark. 
And then there's that molded V8, which you never see because once the body's on, it's hidden. So I'm not sure really what the point of that is. I guess if you mod it to have an opening hood, uh, you could open it up and look at that. The outside of the body has a lot of nice details and molded parts like wipers, side mirrors, door handles. After grinding the body against the rocks and crashing it a lot, it's held up pretty well. It does seem to flex and resist breaking or cracking. The ESC arming button is easy to reach under the right fender and you get used to its location pretty quick. This is nice because if you're crawling around for a while, you can take an extended break, just shut the truck off, and you don't have to take the body off and disconnect the battery. The radio has telemetry to give you an indication of the remaining runtime. It also has the gear shift button and the usual trim dials. You can select a lower throttle limit if you want to give the truck to someone with less experience or a kid, so it's just not quite as fast. Just a word about water resistance. The truck is not entirely waterproof. That means you can go in streams, you can go through puddles, you can drive it through mud, but don't try to drive it across the bottom of a swimming pool. It's probably not gonna work out too well. All right, let's talk about the driving. You can buy this and make it a shelf queen and that's fine, but you're gonna miss out on a lot of fun. I feel like all RCs should be driven or flown. It's something about never stopping the RC. The fun with this big axial truck is the low gear and it's really geared well. The truck can really creep super slow with the torque to get over obstacles, debris, things that are in the way. There's enough power to move rocks out of the way and just power out of tough spots. The steering range is good. I had no issues with that. And there's plenty of servo torque to power the wheels out of a difficult situation. Unless you get them completely locked down, you're gonna still be able to move the wheels. The high gear gives you a decent amount of speed. And where I think this really is most useful is say you go on a hike with the truck, you're going from one crawl spot to another, there are flat sections. Put in that high gear, it can easily keep up with you over those sections. The low gear is just a little too slow for that. You do have enough speed to get a little bit of air with the high gear, take it off some jumps. And I think the other place that'd be a lot of fun with the high gear would be a mud bog. And I want to get into a mud bog at some point. But as I said, the real fun is in the crawl mode. <laughs> This is not a shift on the fly system. In other words, you don't want to start in a low gear, get it up to speed and then shift into high gear. You could damage the truck uh, that way, damage the gearbox. You can also damage it if you shift it where the truck is not moving and then you go. You don't want to have the truck jerking around too much. So to keep it smooth, let the truck cruise along at like one mile an hour and then shift it, let it stop and then go again. If you practice that, you can get it to the point where you're not gonna see the truck jerking uh, or moving violently at all and it will shift nice and smooth. So just practice doing it that way and your gearbox is gonna last a lot longer and you won't end up having to do a repair. I was having a ton of fun just trying to get up and over different inclines and through little canyons and over other obstacles. This incline right here took a while to get right. The wheels were spinning. I was trying to get the right angle. The brake was holding it solid against the rock. No issues with the stock setting of the drag brake. It's a solid hold, but it's also adjustable through the ESC if you wanna do that. And the truck sort of let me know when it was getting into difficulty when it was getting out of sorts. A little reverse, change the angle to correct it. And it was super cool when I finally got over the top and continued around the trail. There's no hiding it, I'm a novice driver. I don't get out to crawl too much, too much time spent with airplanes. This truck makes me feel like I'm a better driver than I really am. And part of that is it does give you good feedback when things are getting on the ragged edge. Things just happen a little bit slower given that big size and weight. Plenty of times I just had to persist on some section, back up, try it again, repeat that. Eventually I'll get through it and this was fun every time. The truck will high center if you don't get it lined up right. You sort of have to practice when to creep along and then when to hit the throttle. But it can high center, so keep that in mind. You can really work on your driving skills. One word on safety. Normally I would not mention safety with an RC crawler. Uh, 
but this is a large truck. And as I mentioned, I was driving it around in Rock City on Mount Diablo. There were a lot of kids around climbing on the rocks. Yeah, they were like, hey, cool little truck. I guess I should have told them I'm a big boy. It's not a little truck. Uh, but it's not light. It weighs about 25 pounds, which means if it rolls off a high rock or drops, that's a lot of mass to be coming at you. It's like a small, very expensive boulder crashing towards you. It could definitely do some damage. So you want to be careful what's below you when driving it around onto a high section or any place you can't see over the other side. Go around and check. Uh, be aware of what's around because you don't want this thing dropping off and crashing towards somebody. After all the driving in this video, it cleaned up pretty well. Didn't show much damage at all. You know, just nicks and scratches, expected stuff. I actually expected more damage uh, given all the stuff I put it through. Even the side mirrors are still attached. They do rotate, uh, which helps them stay on the truck. So at the end of the day, is this truck worth it? Well, if you're getting it because you just want to go over big obstacles, maybe. A 10 scale competition crawler is likely going to handle anything this truck can. The big axle, it's a scaler. The chassis, front bumper, body, they're all in front of the front wheels. It doesn't have that low CG like a competition crawler with that big scale body. And the articulation is not the same as a competition truck. You can spend maybe half the amount and have something that's gonna go over similar terrain. But it won't be a scale truck and it won't have that same look and feel. What about 10 scale? A 10 scale can still go to a lot of places this truck can, especially with an experienced driver. The six scale is gonna have a different look. It's gonna get up a rock section quicker. It's gonna look different. A 10 scale is gonna take longer. It's just gonna have a different appearance on the rock. In other words, the scale of the whole trip is gonna change with the smaller truck. That might be preferable or it might not be. I can also say that after driving the six scale around a lot, it doesn't seem as big after a while. When you first get it, it looks massive. It's so different and huge, but then, you know, you drive it a while, it becomes just the truck that it is. So it is an expensive item and what can be an expensive hobby. I think in the big perspective of hobby spending, it's not all that bad when you consider how unique it is. And of course, they know right where to price something like this, right at the point where you put it in the cart, take it out of the cart, you open the browser, you close the browser, you debate it over and over again. They know that we love this stuff and they price it right at the point where eventually they think we're going to cave and get it. They price these things very carefully. My threshold for RC spending might be a little bit too low, but you know, I don't play golf. I pretty much wear old crappy clothes most of the time. The simple truth is bigger RC stuff does cost more, but with that you get a different experience. You get something that can be entirely different from what you're used to, whether that's a plane, car, truck, heli, or even a boat. Hopefully this video has given you guys an idea of what you get with the truck. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I pulled the trigger on it. It's just so different from anything I've driven. It has this crazy presence. It's a blast to drive. For me, it's a solid yes. Please subscribe guys. Leave any questions or comments below. I always appreciate that. Never stop the RC and I will see you next time. Hello.